Yo yo boys and girls, it's your boy Diverse here, back with another video for the channel. First off, before we even get into this, thank you so much for the 301 and that lucky one subscribers. Thank you all for signing up recently for the channel. We've seen a big growth recently. I want to welcome you all you, your new faces here to the channel and even those from where I've been at 10 subscribers. Thank you all for sticking around. Welcome to the channel. We're back with a new video today and guess what boys and girls? The wait is finally over. After 45 days of no manager, no team talks, nothing behind the scenes, no prep for the new season for Southend, it's finally happened. The wait is over. We have signed a manager. Cue everything right here now. Celebration. Boom. Nah. It has finally happened. The saga is over. It went from Barrett to Tilson to Fagan to Curry, back to Fagan, back to Tilson. We finally settled it on Mark. I think it's Mo Mosley, Mosley, however you say that correct. I've got to get used to that now. But no, boys and girls, we have signed the manager. It is needed. This is where our season now kicks off now. This is the time where us as fans have got to get behind the team. Ron has done his bit. He's brought in a manager who we've all didn't expect. Maybe in a couple last few days, yeah. Yeah, it's confidence going to happen, but this is a manager we need. A manager who will take the team forward, the team, the club as a whole. And I'm just going to go into it now. Why I think Mosley Mosley is the one of really the best options we could have picked out of all this lot. So I hope you sit back, relax and enjoy and make sure if you haven't already, give, up, give this video a like now. So let's go back to the beginning with Mark. What I'm going to call him Mark. He's... He started off as an actual ex-player. He is what well, was a player one time. He started off his youth at, is it Hayes? Yeah, it was Hayes. And he was a central midfielder. He started off his youth there. But throughout his career, he made 346 appearances and 31 goals. And boys and girls, if you keep seeing me look down during this video, it's because I've got all of the, like, his career here on this piece of paper. And if I lose this, then, you know, this video won't be happening. But no, he played 346 games, 31 goals, and he did play in the midfield. I believe he was just, just a central midfielder, maybe a bit more on the defensive side. I don't think he was much of an attacker, but still doesn't matter. He had a great career, played plenty of games. But throughout his career, 13, I actually checked this, 13 seasons he played in the lower league, so to speak. So he played in League Two, the conference, the one below the conference. I think it's the National Premier South, North, whatever it is. But no, he played for the likes of Cambridge, Plymouth, what else was it, Exeter. He also played for Bournemouth under Eddie Howe when Eddie Howe started the rebuild, which obviously we all know about when he took Bournemouth from League Two to the Premier League and recently relegated. Yeah, sorry to see that, Eddie. Really sorry to see that. But no, he's definitely been a long player all the way around. And he also had that link with going back to Bournemouth, being the under-23 manager for a good stint of while, which is why I'm going to come on to it in a minute about his manager and how I think this can influence us with all his links that he's had with Weymouth, Bournemouth and all that. But no, as a player, just looking down here, he actually had an okay career. I wouldn't say it was outstanding or great for a player. It might have been injury hit. I didn't go into too much detail on the player thing. I've just written down his numbers here. But for a player, it looks like a steady bit of like consistency almost. Yeah, he was transferred nearly every season. I think he stayed at a club most for three years and then he switched. The most he was three, then it maybe went to one season and two. So he's definitely a player who liked moving about. I can't say anything. But Mark, please just stay with us for a little bit. Please get us back up to where we were one time. But no, as I said, plenty of time now for a player, very bang average, but also one who could easily stand out in those lower leagues. He must have done well to keep that, like, what would you say, to keep in those leagues for so long. Like, he didn't get, he would, didn't straight away start off in the conference and stay down there. He managed to get up to League Two and even to League One for a couple of seasons. I think it was with Bournemouth again before he left and went on another stint with another team. But no, as a player, very bang average, but as a manager, this is what we really need to look into now, is he's actually, he's a young manager and we've put our faith into a young manager, which is always risky. We did that with Sol Campbell and even, I know Kevin Bond had his assistant manager jobs, but as an actual manager, he was not experienced, nor Sol Campbell. And now we've gone with Mark. And it's a bit, yeah, it's a bit of a risk. We have to look at that first off. We judged every other manager saying they had no experience. But, and so does Mark. He's only age 39. So he's only been in managerial jobs, I think, for about two years, three years maybe. Uh, push. I couldn't find too much on his actual record 
as a manager. It was a bit hard to find it because obviously he's been with Weymouth and Weymouth's results are a bit harder to find as in his playing, how many he's played, won, lost, drawn, his win rate. I couldn't find too much on that. All I could find was the basic stuff like he's obviously got the back-to-back -back promotions with Weymouth, you know, to come up for two leagues and they came back into the Conference League for I think it was the first time in 11, 10 years. You'll have to check me down below any Weymouth fans who watch this. And um, yeah, sorry for stealing your magic. Any top striker, eh. <laughs> But no, as I was saying about Weymouth, the Weymouth chairman linked Mark as a brilliant manager, the best that they've had in a long time at that club. And, in, and actually in his 23 years at the club, it said in a quote that he's the best manager he has seen all year round. And he's just a simply brilliant guy. He works heartless on the training ground. He trains the team well. He gets in, gets into their head. Well, into their heads meaning like getting a good positive message across the whole team that he's here, he's here to work hard. He's here to put in his time, his effort and not to give in with the club at all. We've also got his assistant manager coming, Tom, this one's a bit easier, Tom Prodomo, Pro Prodomo. Yeah, that's the only one I can think of that. He's worked with him for three years at Weymouth as well. And I can honestly say, brilliant. We need both those men there. We can't just randomly bring in, for instance, Mark and have a random chair, not chairman, have a random, watch him a call, assistant coming. He need that. And it was also linked that there are six members of staff coming into the club. As we've seen, Ben Clarkson has unfortunately left us. If anyone who don't watch these videos too much, he was the physio at Southland. He's obviously done a great job considering how many people we've had on that injury list and in that injury room throughout the last couple of years he's done a banging job so i wish him if you ever watch this i wish him the best of luck he's gone to west ham and gotta say brilliant career choice and yeah good luck to you ben but no as i was saying six member staff to come in so there's two of them i'd love for one to be a director of football one that can actually communicate with the message from the chairman to go to the magic goes through him any player signing to go for him love a director of football to come in i can also see I don't know if it's called a second assistant manager or someone in the team, like an attacking coach, a defensive coach, a goalkeeping coach, something like that, just in the squad to help boost the morale a bit because after last season, everyone's a bit down in the weeds, just a bit. We need the confidence lifting. And obviously, we need Brandon Goodship to be scoring goals. This guy made Brandon Goodship the guy he was. For anyone who's confused on that, South inside Brandon Goodship from Weymouth when Mark was in charge of that club, in charge of Weymouth, sorry. So we picked his striker, now we've picked his manager, well no, now we've picked him, so it's almost like a dream made in heaven. Like we have got to see Goodship scoring for fun, being played in a striker role again. Oh yes, he's not being played as a winger and a waste, but no. As we were saying, he's trained good ship. He also has that Bournemouth under-23 managers connection, which is great to see. You know, Bournemouth, apart from the relegation, a great team. They've got, like I would say, a great youth system throughout there. And obviously, with Mark being linked with that, now he's given up Weymouth and Bournemouth to come to us and give us his full attention, I can still see us getting a few links with Bournemouth. If Ron can afford to get rid of this transfer embargo, I know we got a bit of money off the Drew Yearwood, if you can see my eye twitching, yeah, it's this light over here, it's just blind, in it? But no, we got a bit of cash off the Drew Yearwood sale. He went from Brentford to New York Red Bulls, I think it was, and we got, I think I was going to guess about 150k, 200k, maybe a bit less, you never know, but that's a little bit of money to help us through that probably helped with the most what am i saying mostly with the mark transfer and he came through so i imagine that was a bit of money paid to weymouth for his services and all that uh what else kelman yeah there was a link with him going somewhere to swansea it was actually i just remember that i popped in the mind he was going to go to swansea however yeah, things came up a bit differently and Ron's now not saying, we're not selling Kelman, we don't need the money. It's not like we can't sign anyone and we're going to have to rely on everyone again this year. But hey, you know what? We're fine. We can get on with these. But no, it's almost a good thing. If we, if we can't sign anyone, yeah, it's not the greatest look for the club to say, oh, they haven't been able to pay their players, sign players, do anything for the club, really. It's a bit like, oh, it doesn't attract anyone. But Mosley, from what I've heard, is a great guy with younger players. That Don't take that in the wrong way at all, please. That could look so bad. But no... From what I've been told, he's great with youth players, great with the youth system, and that is brilliant to see as we need that in this team. With the amount of youth we've got, we need someone who can almost be in there and be like, I was once you, I came through as a youth, I became a player I was and managed to sustain throughout these leagues throughout so long. He needs that boost throughout the club just to get behind the team and just throw them out there, well prepared for anything coming their way. And... 
As we were saying about Mark, I've got to move on to a guy who I feel was almost a bit robbed by this, and it is Craig Fagan. He did just put out a message on Twitter. I'll try and include it somewhere about here. And it was just saying that, obviously, he didn't get the pick, but can we, can I see him staying? To be honest, no. Like, he wants... I can clearly see he applied for this job. He almost 90% expected to be like, yeah, I'm going to take it, and then just have it taken away at the last minute. I imagine, given a few, maybe a week or so, we would have seen Fagan in charge and... Currently, there are three jobs going down in the National League now. Weymouth has been included. Barnett is another one as Dan, Darren Curry has left. I don't know who the other one is. I'll have to check. It might be Yeovil. I don't know. But, no. I can see Fagan maybe going down there, starting off his career down there and trying to build up his managerial record. As I feel, whilst it's good being the under-23 managers, you want that responsibility. You want to step into the managerial world. So I can see him heading out the door and going to start his managerial career. But that also does leave Ricky Duncan still. And do we put him back as like the main under-23s coach? Yes, I think so. He's done brilliantly well with the youth. And I feel, just give him the role and he'll thrill right through of it. But... I hope Fagan stays. I'm not asking for him to be kicked out the door because we've got Mark now. I just think, you know, it's a bit inevitable almost. And as for Darren Curry, I can see him going to also a similar club, like, like a League 2 club, even a League 1 club. He's done really well with Barnet. He, he was unlucky not to go up. He is, well, he was a local South End lad. But, you know, there's other jobs going here and about. So I can definitely see him definitely taking the step up as similar to Mark here. But... One message I have to give off before I finish off this video is Ron, like I said in the beginning, Ron has done his bit for now. He has got us someone exciting, someone who can play positive, attractive football, maybe attract in some players from like big clubs, i.e. Bournemouth. And now it's our turn in return. We have to give back to the club. We're not saying empty out your pockets, throw your cash at Ron because he'll literally swim in it. Literally. Just we've got to support the club. I know for one, I'm going to be behind this team for like all season, even seasons beyond, whether we be in the lowest lows or the highest highs. We're always going to be behind this club, and I'm for one going to definitely for now just go straight behind the team and be like, Mark, we, you can work this side. I'm not going to judge you on your first few games, I'm going to give you a season because it is literally just going to be a strong out season. It's almost going to be we have to survive this season. And if we survive, brilliant, that's us. If we go up, you know, stunning, he's done an amazing job. Even if we just do mid-table, it's still good with what we've got at the minute. So I, for one, am definitely going to be behind him. I hope all of you lot are as well. I'm going to wrap up this video here now, boys and girls. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Let's all welcome Mark. Head over to the Twitter. He does have a Twitter on there. South End have tagged it, or I'll tag it somewhere here, here, or just go over to Twitter. Fine. Anyway, boys and girls, like I said in the beginning, thank you for 301 subs. We're going to keep growing. We're going to keep going. Vlogs are going to be coming back very soon, hopefully. Please let us back in the stadium but anyway I've been diversity and guess what guys it goes live peace